Wow, that was really powerful worship. That was really awesome. Not quite as good as Kunkel's worship. Enjoy the live worship for sure, but um, that was really awesome. And I love that benediction. You know, I hope everybody was just praying that in their heart, just that God is for you, and, and no matter what goes on in your life, he is for you. And whenever Satan tries to do something, God's going to change that for the good. And so God is always for you. God's always fighting for you. Um, so I hope you guys kind of prayed that benediction on you. I just want to see if we can play that first song again. Um, Because in Acts 2, it says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And so when you, we're going to replay that song, um, that I will prophesy and claim that as something that you are going to do. Like, God, I want to prophesy because he says that we are going to do this in the last days. So let's sing that first song again. Get it in your heart and believe that that's what's going to happen. And then we can carry on. Amen. Let's get that doing there. All right, so announcements. Um, we have a Little Lambs Early Learning Center, our daycare there. Just keep them in prayer. Um, if you, you know, spread the word, let people know that we have our daycare, um, get people to bring your kids there. Um, and then if any, we have any workers, anybody who loves kids, wants to work there part-time, whatever, put in your, um, your applications at llelc at sastel.com. Net, um, come talk to Joanne. We have our new director here, so things are going swimmingly at the at the Little Lambs Early Learning Center. So keep those in prayer. We also have Serendipity, our secondhand store, gently used items down there on Broadway beside the skate park, um, and Sandy and Warren are working in there. So they always are welcoming to helpers, extra hands, people to to. Um, help put out clothes and, and keep things running there. There's always new products there. Make sure you step in there once in a while, check things out. And especially with back to school coming, I'm sure there are gonna be lots of good deals there. Sandy, do you still have your $10 a bag going on? Yeah, $10 for a bag of clothes. Go check it out. Um, and then our Tuesday night Bible study that we have, it's been going fantastic. Starts at seven o'clock, we have a little bit of worship. Um, then we have a teaching by Dr. Ron, right? Ron Swanson. Um, it's a video conference through Video uh, Victory Bible College International. Uh, really excellent teaching that's been going on. And then we have a bit of a discussion afterwards. So that's always a good time. Come on out to that Tuesday nights. And then we have um, our camp out, church camp out coming up this weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to be camping at Good Spirit. Um, it's in the overflow um, camping area, kind of way at the very end of the road. There's a big open field there. Um, talk to Pastor Mark. Um, we'll let people know at the front gate. If you show up at the front gate, just say, yeah, I'm with Victory Church, and they'll let you know where we are. Um, you can come up for the day. You can come up for the entire weekend. Uh, if you just want to stay for one night, whatever. It's open for everybody to come. Bring your friends. Bring your family. It's always a good time. Um, then on Sunday, we're going to have our baptism. So we always go to Good Spirit there and, and do our baptism. I think we might be walking out a little ways to do the baptism. Like Pastor Mark says, I think we may have to dig a hole in the sand to do things. It's, it's pretty shallow there this year. Um, but I think the weather's supposed to be pretty good, so that's good. Amen. Uh, so that's going to be this weekend. So mark that in your calendar. Don't miss it. And um, I think that's all for announcements, right? Are we good for announcements? Announce everything? All right, so uh, let's take up our offering now before we um, get into our teaching. And the baskets are right there. So we'll just do prayer for it. Thank you, gentlemen. So Lord, we just thank you for um, offering that we're about to receive, Father God. We just thank you for everybody who can give. We just pray for those people um, who are unable to give, Lord, that you would just bless them abundantly. Thank you for all of your provisions that you give to us, Father. Thank you for everything that you provide for us and that we would honor you by giving back to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So if um, you didn't want to give in the basket, we also have, um, you can give online 
and that's at yvcadmin at sastel.net. So you can do that online. Um, and so I think that's about all. I think we're ready for you. And here you are. Dwayne is coming up here to give us a wonderful word. Thank you. Give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Amen. 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 Is the microphone on? Sounds like it. Hallelujah. You're about to observe a uh, time-honored tradition, and it's called the raising of the music stand. <laughs> I think I can. There we go. Uh, people say it must be nice to be tall, and well, sometimes it is. But I uh, often say that uh, I'm vertically challenged in my own way. You know, every time I go to try and duck under some low-hanging ductwork or try to find clothes that fit, I'm vertically challenged in my own way. But praise the Lord. God loves people. Amen. Every shape, every color, every size. Amen. Amen. I love that song. I've never heard that song before, I prophesy. You know, there's power in our words. Amen. There's power in our words as, as, as aided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to, I want to, I want to today, right now, before I begin, I, I want to just speak to, to the spirit of heaviness here in Jesus' name, to, to, to leave in the name of Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name uh, for just a, a spirit of expectancy to, to flow upon us all, a spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, all heaviness, all depression, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Bless you today for your grace. Bless you for your power. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, O oh God. Thank you for your holy written word. And we pray that today you would anoint uh, your word. And Father, we pray that, that you would touch your people once again. Touch your people once again. We are in uh, an attitude of expectancy. Hallelujah. We're in an attitude of expectancy, Father God. And so we trust in you to do what you want to do in us here today. In the name of Jesus, in our bodies, in our souls, in our spirits, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, words are powerful. Amen. You know, I was just thinking as, as that song was, was being played, you know, about the power of words. And uh, I shared with you the last time I was here speaking that, that the Lord healed me of uh, brain damage uh, from 2007, uh, late 2007, early 2008. And it, it, was a, it was kind of a process for me, you know, and I had to learn, I had to, learn to get a little bit uh, stubborn. You know, I had to uh, be persistent in, in speaking out, in the name of Jesus, I am healed. In Jesus' name, I'm healed of all symptoms. You know, all the symptoms that came my way, the panic and the, and the depression and, the, and everything that, and, and the, the disability that, that I had. You know, I think I shared with you that I, that I even at one point couldn't, couldn't walk. And, um, and just in this, this last while, I've, I've learned the power of just a holy persistence. And no, devil, no, you're not going to put that on me anymore. No, I'm not going to stand for that anymore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And it was a process. Sometimes, sometimes healing is a process. Amen. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it's a process. Glory to God. The words are powerful. And you know, every, every time I come here, uh, I just leave so fired up. You know, I want to thank you for this opportunity, by the way, to be here again. And you, you guys just fire me up so much. And I, I leave here, and, and I, went, uh, I went back home uh, yesterday. I wasn't actually planning on coming last, last Sunday. I, I said yesterday, but I meant last Sunday. Um, I wasn't actually planning on it, but I just felt led last Sunday to come. And, and I was here. I was, I was a little bit late. I had it in my head that it was two and a half hours from Karen to Yorkton. I've made the trip enough times, I should know. But um, I, I was partway here, and I realized, wait a minute, it's three hours. And so I walked in partway through Pastor Mark's announcements. He didn't know I was here um, at first, but praise the Lord. And I, I was so fired up. And I, I went home and, uh, and I went into the superstore in Moose Jaw. And for some reason, a stranger approached me and said, Sir, how are you coping with uh, COVID-19? And I said, I'm trusting in Jesus, man. 
And, I, and he says, oh, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. And I says, I don't care. I'm trusting in Jesus. He's healed me of so much already. And I'm trusting in him to keep me. Amen? Amen. We curse COVID-19 at its roots in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he, he said to me, oh, are you Catholic? And I said, no. <laughs> I, actually, I'm Pentecostal. And he says, oh. And that, that was about it anyway. The, the power of words. Hallelujah. And last Sunday when I was here, by the way, um, something happened after, after service uh, during the prayer time. I was chatting with Pastor Mark about it here this past week, and he and I both felt it might be a good idea to just kind of explain, do, give a few words of explanation what, what was happening here at the front of the service. Um, there was a gentleman here, a brother here, who came forward for prayer, and, um, and as I laid hands on him and began to pray for him, you know, he started to shake, and, uh, and then, then he went down. And as I continued to pray for him, and, and, and you know, it, he started to throw up. And uh, there was a few of you that were wondering, I think, what was, what was going on? What was happening? And chatting with Pastor Mark, I, I felt it would be a good thing to just, just give a few words of explanation. You know, that this, was a, this was a deliverance, okay? This was a deliverance. And uh, Jesus, when, when Jesus and the apostles in Scripture, when they, when, when they drove out evil spirits, you know, the, the word cast out was, was, was like a violent sort of, you know, uh, ex expelling, you know. And it happens that way sometimes. It happens that way sometimes. I, you know, I've seen it. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to be, you know, if it, if, uh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. But this is, this is what the, thing, the kinds of things that Jesus did, and these are the kinds of things the apostles did, and the, and the church throughout the years. And the brother got up, and, and he said he's never felt so free in his life. It took some time. It took, took some persistence, you know, some holy stubbornness. Sometimes, you know, you've got to get mad at the devil and, and just keep at it. And we put the devil under our feet, Amen. Uh, that's one thing I was proclaiming here when I came up to Yorkton. I was proclaiming in Jesus' name, uh, uh, we put Satan under our feet in Yorkton. In Jesus' name, the kingdoms will be shaken in Yorkton. Hallelujah. I believe that. Words are powerful. Words are powerful. Um, on that note, talking about the power of words. Um, well, I'll, I'll begin to read my text, I guess. Um, I've got to adjust the uh, music stand again here, up and down and up and down. I'll, I'll go to my text in uh, Matthew, or sorry, John chapter 14. Now, I, I, usually, uh, I usually read from the King James, and uh, amen. Um, and I, I kind of do a, maybe a little bit, as Pastor Mark says, a little bit of paraphrasing as I go along, or changing a few words into more modern uh, understanding, you know, sort of like autocorrect. Um, Oh, hopefully better than autocorrect. Um, but I guess it'll be up on the, there we are, it's up on the, it's up on the uh, screen also. Um, I'll begin to read at verse 7. You know, and, and here what's happening in this passage, um, in, back in chapter 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and 17 of John, Jesus is just about to go to the cross. He's just about to die for our sins and to, be, and, and to rise again from the dead. And he's here, he's preparing his disciples. That's one thing he's doing. But he's also, he's, also, uh, he's also fulfilling a lot of the Old Testament. Even right here in these few chapters, he's fulfilling a lot of, of the things that were prophesied about him and the things that needed to be fulfilled about him. And I don't have time to go into all of that. Um, sometime ask Ron Swanson to, to go into that for you because you could spend months. You could spend months going through all of this. But... But Jesus is here to, uh, at the Last Supper, and he's talking to his disciples. And uh, he's saying to Philip, he's saying, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Or it shall, it, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll do, it'll suffice. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long, such a long time with you, and yet you do not know me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? 
And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Hallelujah. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Hallelujah. For the, for the sake of the very miracles themselves, believe me, you know, that I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, the, we see here, uh, Jesus is talking about the Father. You know, the, we, we see here the family of God, right? We see here that Jesus is our big brother. Amen? That's my first point for today, actually, is number one, we need a big brother. We need the big brother, Jesus Christ. Amen? A number of years ago, you know, I learned the power of words. It was in 1996. And I remember exactly where I was in the, in the house when I made this grand statement. I made this rash uh, uh, proclamation. See, at that time, I, I had been a pastor, and I had also had to work at other jobs to make ends meet, and I was what they call a bivocational pastor. I worked at two vacations. Um, and at this time, I, I was not in a church as a pastor, and I didn't actually have a secular job I, either. So we were praying about it, and, and we were talking about it, and, and going over different possibilities. And uh, I remember right where I was in the house when I made this grand and foolish proclamation. I said, I'll never work in the oil field. Well, it was a week and a half later. <laughs> I kid you not. I was in a truck heading north. We'd gone to visit somebody. We'd gone back to a village where we used to live, and uh, somebody invited us over for iced tea on the veranda. And the lady of the house said, Dwayne, would you care for some iced tea? And the, the man of the house looked at me and said, can you be here at 6 in the morning uh, tomorrow? We're heading north. And uh, I, 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 I said, oh, I, well, I guess I said yes to both, iced tea and, and the job. You know, I, I want you to work for me in my oil field construction company. So there I was, heading north. The power of words. And uh, I found myself for about 9 or 10 months working in uh, first plant construction and oil, uh, pipeline construction. At one point, I was in camp. We were up uh, north of Fort Assiniboine, Alberta. And uh, between Fort Assiniboine and Slave Lake, there's a huge stretch of just muskeg. That's all it is. Swamp. Muskeg. Bush. And there, there were a lot of gas wells dr drilled in there. The, you can, the only way you can drill them is in the wintertime when the muskeg is frozen and you can drive on it, you can operate heavy equipment on it. And uh, this, this stretch of muskeg was, was kind of owned by the logging companies or they had the rights to, to the, the, the territory. And, the, and they were the ones who made the roads, if you call them roads, out on the frozen muskeg. They took, they took a, a bulldozer and bulldozed a network of, of trails all across this muskeg, all the way from Fort Assiniboine to, to Slave Lake a huge area. So really, they owned the roads. These were not uh, Department of Highway roads. They weren't even really roads. They were trails, and they were literally owned by the loggers, by the logging companies. And, you know, nothing against loggers. Um, there's wonderful loggers out there. Um, but these ones owned the road, and they seemed to know it. And they seem to resent us oil field guys, us pipeliners and us riggers uh, being on their trails. And here we were in just our pickup trucks. And there they were in their semis. And I tell you, it was a terrifying thing. In the dark, in the morning or, or at dusk, to be going down one of these trails and all of a sudden the, all these lights come up over top of the rise. And they're bearing down on, upon you. And, and they don't slow down. And they don't move over. And... More than once, some of us ended up in the snowbank, ended up literally run off the road. But one day, we got us a big brother. We got us a big brother from, from uh, headquarters, Sylvan Lake, Alberta. They sent up uh, one of our semis and to haul our heavy equipment, our, our, our uh, backhoes and our cats and our side booms from, from site to site to site. And so they respected him. He was as big as they was. They couldn't run him into the ditch. 
So, was about, so we were trying to follow as closely as we could with, with him, with Big Brother. And so when, whenever we met a logging truck, you know, or he also had, he got in two two-way radios, one with their frequency and one with ours, so he would let us know. They'd be chattering on their radio about where they were, where they were going, where they were heading, where they are going to be, and so he'd let us know, and so we could scurry for cover. All these, these crew trucks madly trying to find a place to pull off <laughs> at the side of the muskeg somewhere. So we had a big brother. Glory to God. Big brother Jesus. He's gone ahead of us. Hallelujah. He's greater than any old semi, let me tell you. Amen. Big brother Jesus. And here he is. He, and and, and he's, he's shown his disciples the way. He's, he's taught them for three and a half years. And he's about to die for them. He's about to die for you and me. Amen. Amen. He's our big brother. He's gone ahead of us. He's, he's the one who is stomped on the head of the serpent, the devil. And in him we do the same thing. You know, it's not just words going out into the thin air when I proclaim over Yorkton, you know, that Satan is bound in Yorkton. You know, it's powerful. Amen. Because I'm trusting in Big Brother. Big Brother Jesus. Amen. So we have a Big Brother. But you know what Big Brother said to us? Big Brother said to us, now you guys go and you guys do what I've been doing. So point number one is we have a Big Brother, but point number two is we are to go and to do what Big Brother has done. Amen. He said there in uh, verse 13, oh, sorry, verse 12, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. The works that I do also, the works that I do, he or she will do also. And greater works, greater works shall he, than these shall he do or she do. Greater works, greater works, greater works. Say it with me. Greater works, greater works shall we do because I go to the Father. Hallelujah. Because I go to the Father, he said, and, and he, he'd already, or he'd be, he was about to teach them that, that when he goes to the Father, he would send forth his Spirit. And his Spirit would be in us. His Spirit would be upon us. Hallelujah. And we would do the exact same kinds of things that he did. And, and even greater. Hallelujah. That's why we can trust that Yorkton's going to be revived. And southeastern Saskatchewan's going to be revived. Hallelujah. Greater works. Greater works. Hallelujah. So we do what Big Brother did. You know what's interesting about it? Is when Jesus came and he was doing these miracles, and he was going around healing the sick and raising the dead and cleansing the lepers and, and casting out demons. When he was walking on the water, when he was changing water into wine, all of these sorts of things, when he was doing all these things, he wasn't doing them by his power and authority as the Son of God. He didn't still the storm on the sea because he was the Son of God. He did these things as a man full of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he is still the Son of God. Yes, he's God in human flesh. You know, he always was and always will be God. But he, when he came to this earth, he, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, he, even though he was equal with God, even though he is equal with God he, he, and thought it not robbery to be equal with God, he made himself as nothing but became, took on flesh and became the form of a servant, took on the form of a servant. Hallelujah. And um, even here in this passage in, in John chapter 14, you know, in verse 10, he said, The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He does the, the works. You know, Jesus was listening for the words of the Father. He said in one place, uh, I don't, What I do, I, I've first seen the Father doing it. You know, he emptied himself of his glory and he came to earth. All four of the Gospels record the baptism of Jesus. 
And you know, when he came down to the River Jordan and he was baptized by John the Baptist, John looked at him and, and, and said, you know, Jesus, you should be baptizing me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and, and un, untie your sandals and tie them back up again. You should be baptizing me, Jesus. But Jesus said, no, let it be, let it be so for now, so, so that everything will be fulfilled. You know, everything in the Old Testament had to be fulfilled. All the prophecies, the, the law, everything had to be fulfilled. And, and so, so John baptized Jesus, and you know the story of how when Jesus came up out of the water, uh, the, the Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And the Father spoke over him and said, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And it was at that point when the Spirit descended upon Jesus, it says the, the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness, into the desert, where he was tempted by the devil 40 days and 40 nights, and he fasted and he prayed. You know, I've been in that desert. And, and, you know, I have never seen so much nothingness in my whole life. I've never seen so much barrenness in my whole life. You know, people talk about Saskatchewan. Well, you know, Saskatchewan's flat and there's nothing there. Oh, come on. There's a lot here. Amen? I, it used to bug me when I go back to Alberta, where I'm from, and every every time I'd go back, I'd suddenly start hearing these Saskatchewan jokes, and I never noticed them before, but now 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 I do, and they bug me. But I've I've been in I've been in the in the Judean wilderness, in Israel, and it is barren and it is burning. I, I it's nothing like other deserts. I mean, I've I've been in deserts in in California, in uh, Arizona, in Nevada in Kamloops even. But they are lush in comparison to this, where the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness after the Holy Spirit came upon him. Satan tempted him 40 days and 40 nights. Satan tempted Jesus with the same three temptations he tempted Adam and Eve with. The lust of the, fl- the, the, lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He tempted Jesus to give in in the same way that he was successful in causing Adam and Eve to give in to temptation. He came after Jesus. Only notice Adam and Eve were in a lush, beautiful garden, the Garden of Eden. And Jesus was in the desert, fasting. Adam and Eve had every tree they could eat of. And yet they still fell into sin. But Jesus came and he resisted. He resisted the same temptations that Adam and Eve did. But he, and he did it not by his authority as the Son of God. He had put it aside. He put aside some of his glory when he came to this earth. He resisted Satan as a man full of the Holy Spirit and as a man who was trusting in this, a man who, re, who resorted to this, to the Word of God. He answered Satan with every test that Satan gave him. He said, no, it is written. And I have to, myself, I have to claim this again and again and again. Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he has borne our sicknesses and our pains, it says in the Hebrew. He has borne my sicknesses and my pains, and by his scars, by his stripes, I am healed. I have to claim that again and again and again. I have to stand in it, get in that holy stubbornness, you know, and, and, and declare it again and again and again every day. Every day I declare I am well, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In my soul and in my body, in Jesus' name. So we do the same things that, that Big Brother did. And he said, even greater. Even greater. Hallelujah. You know, I, I noticed um, a few years ago, I noticed this sometimes, this, uh, like this quiet, this quiet kind of gentle knowing rising up in my spirit at times. I'd, always, I'd known for many years that, that the Lord was going to call me to to, into a, a healing and deliverance kind of ministry. And I'd seen little bits of it over the years. I mean, I'd seen my daughter healed when she was little. And I'd seen little bits of it over the years. But just in the last couple of years, um, I noticed this, this gentle sort of knowing rising up within me. And uh, I had helped to start a church, a little village church in the uh, village of Riverhurst um, near uh, Lake Diefenbaker. And one Sunday, 
in this village church, the, the guy who was the lead pastor, right in the middle of the service, it wasn't even at the end of the service, but it was in the middle of the service, he invited people uh, to come forward if they had a need for healing in their lives. And there was a family there, and they weren't actually even Christians. They just happened to be there. The, some of their other family members were part of the church, and, and they were there for a family reunion. And so this family came forward. And they had a little girl. She was maybe two, between two and three, a toddler. And the little girl could not eat. She was fed through a tube. And something, something must have rose up in this, these, these people, even though they, they weren't church people. And they brought this little girl forward. And I anointed her with oil and prayed. And something rose up in me, this gentleness, this gentle knowing, and I just declared, you're healed in Jesus' name to this little girl. And that was it. And they went, they went back. I, I might have prayed a few more words, but they went back to their seats. And I found out later she was instantly healed. Never had a tube again. She never had a tube again. Wow. You know, and sometimes it's dramatic. As I said, sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's progressive. Sometimes you see it. Sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you don't. But you just, you just got to uh, buckle down and say, I'm, I'm claiming it. I'm believing it in the name of Jesus. The same things that Jesus said, you will do the same things I did and even greater. Hallelujah. And it's not me. It's not me. It is not me. And it's not you. But it's the spirit of Jesus within your human spirit. Amen. The spirit of Jesus within your human spirit rising up. Rising up within you. Hallelujah. That's my third point. The spirit of big brother. We need a big brother. Uh, we do the same things that big brother does. And thirdly, it's by the, the power of his spirit that is within us. Reading on, Jesus said here in, uh, in John chapter 14. Verse 16. And I will pray the Father. And he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. He shall be in you, shall be in you and upon you. Hallelujah. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me. And because I live, you also shall live. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father and you in me, and I in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's, He is within us. The healer is within us by His Spirit. Healing is within us by His Spirit. Deliverance is within us by His Spirit. It's not so much that healing is out there somewhere. You know, healing is out there, you know, we, we got to beg for God to send it from out there somewhere to us. No, it's in here. Healing is already in here. Salvation is already in here. The covenant is already in here. You know, this is the covenant meal with Jesus and his, his followers. We don't understand the, the, the power of covenant here in North America as much. But you know, God has bound himself to us by the covenant. The covenant is within us. All the rights and obligations and privileges of being uh, children of God by covenant, by the blood covenant is within us. And Jesus said, you know, sometimes, sometimes we, you know, we, we don't feel like we have much faith. Jesus said, if you just have faith like a mustard seed, just have faith like a mustard seed. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Maybe I'll turn back there for a moment. Matthew 17, verse 20. Um, Jesus just cursed the fig tree. A fig tree uh, withered from the roots up because Jesus said, may, may you never produce fruit again. And his disciples were amazed. You know, the power of words. Hallelujah. And again, I say that he didn't do that as his, in his authority, in his role as the Son of God. He did that as a man full of the Holy Spirit. 
Um, Matthew chapter uh, 17. Actually, sorry, no, this, is, uh, this isn't the fig tree. It's something very similar to the fig tree, what, what, he, what he said, but this is the healing of, of a, of a demon-possessed boy. And uh, the, the disciples couldn't cast it out, and Jesus came along and drove it out. And the disciples said to Jesus, verse 19, Why could not we cast him out? Cast it out. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible for you. I'm proclaiming that to you today here at Yorkton Victory Church. Nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing shall be impossible for you. Amen. Say it. Say it. Nothing shall be impossible for me. Nothing shall be impossible for me. If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, a mustard seed is pretty tiny. It's like a canola seed. Canola and mustard are cousins. That's why you can't spray for wild mustard in a field of canola, because they're too closely related. You know how small a canola seed is? Jesus said, if you have faith like that, you'll say to this mountain, um, be removed and cast into the heart of the sea, and it shall obey you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I want to speak today. I want to speak faith in the name of Jesus. I want to speak faith in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking faith. I'm speaking faith. Receive it today. I'm speaking anointing, healing. May healing flow in the name of Jesus in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you in a few minutes, uh, anyone that would like prayer, um, I myself have known, I've known the darkness, you know. I talked about the brother that needed deliverance last week. There's no shame. I myself needed deliverance at one time in my life. I myself have, ha have experienced healing. Healing and deliverance are very closely intertwined. Healing, salvation, healing, deliverance. I call them the big three. Really, they're a package deal. They're one and the same. Hallelujah. So I want us to, in a few minutes, I'm just going to invite anyone that needs prayer to come forward. I have uh, anointing oil as well, somewhere. And um, but let's just, let's spend some moments in, in an attitude of prayer, in a posture of expectancy. If you're able to, to stand, would you stand with me? As we pray here today, hallelujah, Lord, thank you, Lord, we bless you, Lord, bless you, Lord, we enter back into a spirit of worship, O oh God, tonight, today, in the name of Jesus, we enter into a, a spirit of worship, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, bless you, mighty God, we bless you, mighty God. We bless you, mighty God. We bless you, mighty God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Lift up your hands to him. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for the blood of the cross. We plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over the, the people gathered here today, oh God. The blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, Lord. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. We, I speak healing in the name of Jesus, even now. Even now, as... as uh, as we pray, even now, even as we, as we are in our places, right now I proclaim healing over your people in the name of Jesus. Healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Touch your people. Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Bless you, Lord. You know, sometimes people have been healed and, and then 
because of negative words, um, sometimes they've, they've lost their healing. You know, the Bible says in, in uh, Proverbs 18, 21, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So right now, right now, would you just join me and just proclaim that, that you are healed in Jesus' name. That you are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And hold on to that. Hold on to that. Don't let it go. Hold on to that. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you'll touch your people. Pray, Father, that you'll speak to your people, Lord. That faith would rise. That faith would rise in each and every one of us here today. Lord, your power is here. Your, your anointing is here. Your, your, your healing anointing is here present in, present in the name of Jesus, Lord. It is flowing. It is flowing. It is flowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Just like to invite anyone as we close um, to come forward if you have a need. You have a need of healing whether it's a torment in your mind, whether it's a, in your body, just come forward and we'll pray in the name of Jesus. You, you may be seated. If, uh, if anyone needs to leave, feel free to go. But for those that need a touch, I just invite you to stay here. Stay in this anointing. Stay in this anointing. Hallelujah.